we'll just count it down and then i think at the end we can kind of say like uh our honorable mention sort of a number six position we also had some thoughts on to some guys that got left out but maybe should be considered extremely important for tennessee but zach go ahead and and start us off here at number five for tennessee's most important players in 2022 uh who's number five yeah, I, I really feel like part of this list you could have put in any order. Uh, but the last name I wrote down, so I, I started from one to five. So my feeling was that uh, number five was Trayvon Flowers. I feel like he's a very important player to Tennessee's defense. He's uh, He's got, got to be the captain of the secondary back there with Alante Taylor and, and Theo Jackson gone. He's the, he's the senior guy. He's the experienced guy. Uh, that whole unit needs a lot of help. I mean, that's probably the weakest part of Tennessee's defense, especially at cornerback. But Trayvon Flowers can kind of be the guy that the glue that hold that position group together, and he's he's got to be a guy. He's got to stay healthy, and, and if so, I think that that group can be at least average. And that's really all you're looking for out of them this year. They don't have the depth. They don't have the talent that some of the other secondary groups in the SEC has. But uh, Flowers and his veteran leadership, I think, can make a real difference. Yeah, I, I hope that him speaking at media days is kind of a sign that he's stepping up and and really being that guy and a leader in the room. I think he has that potential. You just you lose a lot of fire with Elante Taylor, man. He he obviously brought a lot of talent. Uh, they got him drafted into the NFL, but he he also I mean he was a leader. He was very vocal. He had a lot of fire. Um, maybe a little too much sometimes, and. Uh, and you, you kind of have to replace that, and maybe he can be a you know a little more level headed version of Alante Taylor, almost um, p- potentially in, in that defensive back position. I think he's yeah. The defense this year is just I think the linchpin of everything, right? And and so stopping stopping the pass and and covering, I mean, especially after last year, covering the middle of the field. Some things like this, obviously, that goes to linebackers and and has some other factors to it too. But um, I think it's incredibly important because you just you think when it is as back and forth as Tennessee games are going to be with Heupel, one batted pass can be the game. This mm-hmm. one batted pass was the game against Kentucky this past year. Like think about that, and so it can be that tenuous, that close, and. Uh, so yeah, he's he's incredibly uh, important. Who is who's number four for you? Uh, I think it's got to be one of uh, Tennessee's pass rushers, and I think it can be either one of these guys. I lean towards Byron Young uh, being guy, but Taylor Barron right there. You need those guys to work together. Byron Young, I believe he led the team in uh, tackles for loss last year. Him and Tyler Barron, and I believe Jeremy Banks all kind of had around five five and a half sacks. You really want to see one of those guys get close to about 10 sacks this year, and you need the other one to be right at around six or seven. I mean, that's – if quarterback is the most important position on the field, and I think getting after the quarterback has to be right there uh, next to that. I think you see in the NFL your highest-paid players, your quarterback, your edge rushers, and your cornerbacks. And uh, I, I think that's just as true in college football. Like, those same guys are just as important. If you can get the quarterback, if you can make him uncomfortable – get them in some third and long situations. I mean, your your chances of winning the game go way up. Uh, Tyler Barron coming back this year when he could have um, – he was in the transfer portal uh, very briefly. I'm sure some NIL deal kind of helped uh, bring him back to, to Tennessee. Getting him back was very important, but if that combination really need them to step up and, and just take another step forward. They played well last year, but they got it. They just got to take it up a notch this year. Yes, a- absolutely, because – like you said, if you can have a 10 sack guy where Young Young was at five and a half, Banks at five and a half, Matthew, Matthew Butler at five, Tyler Barron at four. Yeah. I mean, if you can double that production for both of those guys, uh, 10, uh, 10 for Young, eight for Barron, something like that, that's a dangerous pass rush. Uh, and that means that they're getting back there into that backfield a lot and that they grew a lot over the, the offseason. It, is is just another piece of that defense where any disruption, any you know, a hold on third down, like and and 
not letting uh, the team respond after a big score that Tennessee will inevitably have in all of these games, you know, they're that quick strike offense, you know, getting a stop is like, it's the, the, getting a stop is going to be gold for this team in, in this, this coming year, especially with so many of these toss up games, you, you just, you, you don't need turnovers. You don't need turnovers. In yeah. Games. Oh my gosh. It's, it's going to be huge. Like, think about the importance of the difference that, like, Derek Barnett made. Like, the, the mm-hmm. 2016 uh, Georgia game, the strip sack in the end zone got Tennessee the lead in that game. They do not win without it. It was huge. And just even, even if you get the quarterback of any given team here in footsteps, and then they make mistakes. Like, just so much of that is so important. Uh, and, of course... Flowers and the defensive backs working sort of in tandem with the pass rush. You can kind of have a coverage sack where the coverage is so good that the quarterback doesn't get a pass off. And then he gets sacked. Um, you know, they, they can kind of work in tandem. Uh, it It's just, it's all just going to be so key uh, with this, with this team. But where, where did we go for number three? I think pe- people might be sensing a, uh, a theme here, but uh, number three, Zach, for our top five player. Yeah, I had uh, Jeremy Banks there. I think he's the leader of the defense. I think you need him to be at a high level. You need him to to really be the guy, kind of like Trayvon Flowers is in the secondary. You need Jeremy Banks there to to be that guy for the entire defense. Um, Tennessee's going to face some more. Uh, the longer that Josh Heupel's at Tennessee, the longer this style of offense is successful, the more you're going to their team kind of copy in that, and they're going to incorporate tempo into their offense in their own unique way. Uh, that means opposing offense is going to be moving faster. Jeremy Banks has the uh, – and the whole defense has the benefit of practicing against Tennessee's offense every day, so they're kind of more pre- prepared to to handle this than maybe some other defenses. But there's some quick calls you got to make. Jeremy Banks going to have to make sure everybody's lined up in the right spot. He it, that's, that's his responsibility. I mean, he is uh, the guy out there. He's the extra coach extra defensive coach basically he's got to play more controlled this year he's got to cut down on the dumb penalties you can't have a a personal foul penalty kill you in the third quarter if you've made a third down stop and then you give the other team fresh life i mean there's nothing more maddening for a fan a coach or probably even a teammate than to see something like that happen i love jeremy banks and the way he plays i mean he plays with aggression he's physical high energy he's passionate he wants to win uh, he's out there for all the right reasons. He just has to harness that. And I know that's been a big point of emphasis for Tim Banks and that defense and the position coaches, but this is Banks. It feels like he's been at Tennessee forever. Uh, this is his last hurrah. So he really, uh, if he wants a shot in the NFL, he's got to prove that he can play controlled out there and be a guy of the defense. He had 128 tackles last year. That dude was all over the field. Uh, I think that uh, you move on numbers in in the coming season he's he's gonna be a linchpin and and that's that's why we put him there i think he's he's the most important piece on that defense and just any anybody at that at that mic spot uh because it just is uh well the am i thinking of that i forgive me i'm not a huge like uh is it is it what's the middle line middle linebacker is mike right or will what's who yeah it, it's mike I'm, but at the same time you get so many nickel packages in, in college yeah. football these days where you got five dvs on the field with two linebackers it's doesn't even it's, matter it's kind of yeah it's kind of weird i mean uh you don't but have Byron gonna... young kind of lined up as a linebacker but pass rushing linebacker and then maybe juan mitchell on the other side of banks yeah he's he's a, a as you said there, I mean, he's going to be the guy kind of coordinating on the field just at that spot a lot of the time. And that's that's the whole deal. Can can he stay within himself, stay stay cool because he is such a hothead and has been like, let I, I want to see him grow. And because if you can harness the talent that he has and cut out those stupid plays, it is right there for that guy. Uh, I one th- that I do wonder you think Juwan Mitchell is going to be a factor this season because he was injured last year and people people really thought he was going to contribute, uh, gets injured and doesn't end up playing uh, barely at all. So uh, yeah, people he, he's not going to talk about he it was, all. 
No, people assumed he was going to hit the transfer portal, but he didn't. Yeah, me too. You know, he, stayed, he was the leading tackler at Texas the year before he came to Tennessee, back in uh, 2020, the COVID-shortened year. And you said he kind of got injured. I know Buck Rising, uh, A to Z Sports, the host of uh, show on 105 Zone, the Buck Rising Show, he had Tim Banks on earlier this offseason and specifically asked him about Jawan Mitchell. And, you know, Banks kind of said, you know, he's getting healthy and we need him to be a big part of the defense this year. Like we need him to 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 contribute and to be somebody we can lean on. So he's got the talent, obviously. He played well at Texas. If he's healthy, I think he will be uh one of Tennessee's main defensive players, one of their one of their linebackers they count on. I hope so. And then it just any of those dudes that are still there, what uh Beasley? You know, you, you want to see contributions and, and growth from any any of those guys because we've already been saying it. What will take this team over the top is just making, honestly, just making the defense like marginally better. Like you were, you were that close where two stops in a given game, two stops against Miss, uh, against Ole Miss, you win that game. And, you know, it, it ultimately won you the game against Kentucky. And some of those toss-up games, it can be the entire difference. I think you're going to have a tougher time against South Carolina at South Carolina, like a toss-up game like that at LSU. Could have stopped, make the difference. And because you know you're going to score points. You know, you get, you're going to expect 35, 45 points a game. And then can you hold the other team to 30 and and win and win eight, nine, ten games. Uh, obviously, we'll we'll see exactly how it goes. I I just wonder, I wonder how Tim Banks is really feeling. I would love to know his genuine feeling going into this season, like where he really did. You lost some key pieces, Alante. You know, like how how are they really anticipating the season going? With this defense, because I I'm genuinely not sure. Like, because there are those rogue pieces. If Jawan Mitchell plays a lot, how's he going to play? I we haven't seen him. It's and I think he was the leading tackler at Texas. What if he ends up being a giant contributor and it like turns that defense on its ear and they they suddenly become decently competent and uh you know that's that's the whole difference maker. Like it could be that simple, honestly, this year. So I'm I think part of it is just nervous finding- but excited. Finding good leadership on that defense. Tennessee lost yeah. some good leaders last year with Alante Taylor, Theo Jackson, Matthew Butler, one of the mm-hmm. one of the best leaders Tennessee's had in a long kind of a quiet, quiet type guy. But when he's when he talked, players listen. Uh replacing that leadership, that void in leadership, I think will be the biggest, biggest thing. That's why you need Jeremy Banks, Trayvon Flowers, Byron Young, uh, Tyler Barron, some of these guys to step up in a big way. Yeah, got to step up. Uh, so now, finally, for for the last two, I think people might know where this might be heading. Although number two was a surprise to even me um, when you you said this to me, the number two most important player for Tennessee this year uh, was what? Yeah, I think I mean it could be one of two players right now. I think that Gerald Mitty. I mean, he's uh, offensive lineman transfer from Florida. You lost Kate Mays to the draft. You, you're kind of replacing him, basically, in a way. The, the plan appears to be to slide Darnell Wright from left tackle to right tackle. Darnell Wright, another a potential first-round pick, possibly, in that draft. He practiced most of spring at right tackle, so it looks like he's going to slide to the right side. So then you need, you need a new left tackle, right? I mean, the most important offensive lineman in in, in football, the left Watch tackle. The side. Yeah. So it looks like Gerald Mincy might be that guy. It could be Jeremiah Crawford, who was at Tennessee last year, played in 10 games, didn't see a game. Uh, one of those guys, probably. They split time in spring. Mincy, I believe, was beat up a little bit at the beginning of spring, kind of got more reps at the end of spring. Whichever one of those guys wins that job is going to be hugely important because you don't have a ton of depth there. Luckily, you've got those guys maybe who can either platoon there or one steps in if one's banged up but that's i mean that's gonna be a really important position i mean you you gotta have a quality you gotta win in the trenches in the sec and tennessee's they protected hinden hooker pretty well last year but you said you lose an nfl talent in Cade mays 
Uh, and and depth is uh, important thing really there. I mean, that's kind of what held Tennessee back on both sides of the ball last year at times was a lack of depth. So if Mincy and Crawford can both be SEC starting uh, caliber players, that's huge for Tennessee. Yeah, that was one of the most interesting transfers recently was Mincy. It just kind of got ignored. It I, I don't remember much talk about it at all. And it's at such a key position, like you're saying, where you're you're losing – I mean, Cade Mays, just what a giant piece off of that line and, and some losses like that. And he's stepping in as a guy and looking. He played in 10 games uh, as a, a redshirt freshman at Florida. Um, and so he has SEC experience and he can step in. You said it's, it is kind of a toss up Crawford potentially at that spot. But uh, I... I got caught off guard by that choice, and I think it is the right choice at that number two spot because it is going to be incredibly important because of the number one choice, which, of course, I think everybody knows uh, who it's going to be. It is the uh, the place kicker um, on the team. <laughs> Without a doubt. Yeah, who I don't who even is it going to be this year? I'm Honestly, I was I, I'm, I was I was I was to war a long snapper, but we can go place kicker. That's fun. <laughs> Let's. Let's see. I have the depth chart uh, up here. Um, oh, it's uh, yeah. It'll still be Chase McGrath. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was a transfer. Um, and then the long snapper, Matthew Solansky. Yeah, these they deserve a shout out. Hey, they're yeah. important. Genuinely, look, the they, long the long snapper touches the ball more than almost anybody except the quarterback, the running back, or the uh, center. So I mean, he's yeah. he's going to be touching the ball as much as anybody in the game so it is a pretty important position but not the most important yeah it is it is not the number one of course the the number one is hinden hooker i uh i think anybody with an honest assessment of this team looks and he's the guy this team goes as hinden hooker goes yes the defense will be huge uh and and one of the biggest factors in this formula but let's Let's say hypotheticals like this. Hooker connects on 10% more passes this coming year. And you score any number of times. I mean, you, you you look even at just the Purdue game last year where just a couple of throws were just a little too strong. If he connects on those, Tennessee wins that football game. And what does that translate to this year? If he improves, improves his touch, improves his vision, improves his, his you know, being more cerebral and, and thinking – uh, through the game or being f- more familiar with the system. Um, what kind of, kind of steps does he take? And he just, it's, it's going to be the whole thing. Of course, he was the whole thing last year. It made all the difference in the world going, going uh, to him. And so it just, what, what can you say? He's the, his deal is the whole deal for Tennessee this year, not to put too much pressure on the kid, but it's going to be massive. I mean, he's, he is arguably, um, I think who, what you would say young is probably the best returning quarterback in the sec, but I, would you he's right there in that conversation. Hooker is right. It's, it's yeah. massive. I mean, you've seen a lot of talk about Will Levis, Lucky, uh, the Arkansas quarterback, and they like to put them up there. But yeah, I think Hendon Hooker is right there. I mean, the guy, I mean, he had 31 touchdowns and only three interceptions. That to me is the most massive. impressive stat. Uh, of of the year for Hooker, just the, as much as Tennessee was throwing the ball, and a lot of balls down, these weren't all just short passes, little out routes, and screen passes. He was throwing the ball down the field a lot, taking a lot of chances, only through three interceptions. I mean, that's that's incredibly impressive to me. I think that's really the mark of a good quarterback. It's the one thing you see in guys like Joe Burrow and and Bryce Young. They just don't turn the ball over very much. But the Hinden Hooker Hinden Hook effect. I mean, really, you if if he starts against Pittsburgh, if he doesn't get hurt against Ole Miss, I mean, Tennessee wins nine games last year. If the right call against Purdue's made uh, with Jalen Wright and that goal line call, Tennessee's a ten win team last year, and who would have who would have thought that? I mean, those are hypothetical. But on the flip side, if Hendon Hooker doesn't play against Kentucky, um, you know, that's a six win team, and and maybe they lose one of those other games that they blew out a. Uh, South Carolina or Missouri, you know, maybe they lose one of those games if Hendon Hooker's not playing. I mean, we saw 
in that Bowling Green game where that Joe Milton started this opener last year, a Hendon Hooker led team wins that game by 50 points. And, and, and Tennessee won convincingly, but it felt like the offense never really found its rhythm. And that's what that's what Tennessee was facing for the whole year. We saw it in the beginning against Pittsburgh and, and until Hooker came in the game. So who's to say this team doesn't end up five and seven last year without Hendon Hooker under center? I mean, he's that important to, yep. this, to this offense. Absolutely. So that's I think everybody kind of knew that was going to be number one, and most people that would be their their number one. Uh, but just to have a guy who's been in the system for a full year, then had an entire off season with quarterback Spur, Josh Heupel is and just more familiarity with the system, more familiarity with the guys uh, that he's going to be throwing, handing all off to, just more synergy in in general. Just what what more can you say? It, it's just going to be the biggest factor on on this team. Can you go from averaging 38 points to averaging 45? Like, that's wins. That's wins in the win column is just that seven extra points in a game. And so uh, that's that's pretty much the long and the short of it. We can hawk on the defense all we want. This team is built completely around offense. As And I'm sure if somebody that hears our rankings here, or our, our list – they're going to be screaming about the wide receiver position. And if, if this was a top six or seven, I probably have Cedric Tillman at number six. Like he's very important to this offense, but it's, I, I don't want to say this and like insult Cedric Tillman in any way, because I, I don't think this is like a hundred percent the case, but Josh Heupel's offense is one where you don't have to. And we've talked about this before. Whenever Carnell Tate committed to Ohio state, you don't have to have a five star wide receiver to make this work. We saw Hillman, Ailis Jones, and Javante Payton last year. Some three-star guys who stepped up and, and played at an elite level, pretty much. You you can get by with moderate talent. I don't think Cedric Tillman is – I think he's got a future in the NFL, but I don't think he's going to go out there and be Jamar Chase or Justin Jefferson in his first year or two in the NFL. Like, I don't think he's that kind of talent. You don't want to lose Tillman. But if you do lose Tillman, if, if that happens, if something a catastrophic injury happens in training camp, it'll be disappointing, of course, and it will it will impact Tennessee's offense. But I think they've got the the talent with guys like Jalen Hyatt that can step in there and stretch the field and and make up for that loss. I think I think Tennessee is just better situated to handle losing a player at wide receiver than they are at these other positions. We said it all last season. The system works, especially springing guys open. I mean, it just, it's artful in its simplicity. It was, I was really impressed the entire year because I was so skeptical of exactly how a, a quote unquote like gimmicky offense would be in the SEC. And it just worked. It just worked. Like, that's it. And you're, I think you're exactly right. Tillman is unbelievably important to this team. And I think he could have a huge career year and probably make himself some money potentially this coming year. I mean, you just look at Bayless getting drafted, like he, he, he could make some money this year. Uh, but at the end of the day, you have high, like a brew McCoy waiting in the wings. Who knows how that gets gonna, gonna be, but a former five star. And, um, you know, you just, you have talent there that, that is going to be able to work in that system and be effective regardless. And so, yeah, you, you said it there. That's basically our number six in terms of most important players was really any mix. I mean, take your pick there. I think Tillman is the most obvious choice, but I think I could also make an argument for like a Princeton fan, Jacob Warren at the tight end position or whoever uh, will, will be the most productive at the tight end position. Because if you could add in an effective tight end, to this offense, that's an entire other wrinkle that is, you know, that just gives you that much more uh, firepower. And so there's plenty to be said about the skill positions because you can also go like the running backs. The running backs were a huge. Heupel ran the ball way more than I ever thought he was going to last year. The quarterbacks were a massively important position, but I just think the stuff that we listed, just defense, the defense becoming exponentially better, 
Hooker taking that step forward and being even more of that guy and the offensive line in front of Hooker where you sort of go, who is going to fill those holes that are left at an incredibly important position? We just kind of felt like that that trumped that because you know that the wide receivers are going to get theirs. You know that the running backs are going to get theirs. When you run as many plays as Josh Heupel does, you give him as many chances as you're going to just naturally they're they're going to be a big part of this so we just thought that these other players were just more important uh not that those guys aren't important i guess you could say uh but any before we bounce out of here we're going long zach any other thoughts on the top five players for tennis most important players and and i'll uh i'll throw it in here at the end this was uh inspired by 247 sports they were doing a countdown of the most important players for tennessee uh, I want to give credit where it's due. We're not trying to rip anybody off. Um, but, uh, they, they've been doing a list. They're only at like number 11 or something. They're doing it in like a slow rollout. Don't know if we'll meet up, uh, on, on any of those, but, uh, I, I have a feeling we'll meet up at number one for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I would question their, their credibility if, if we don't share a number one, but, um, the, that they were the, the inspiration for this. And but any any other thoughts uh, on the top five players? Yeah, I, I think uh, to to go along with Gerald Mincy and the offensive line, kind of there at number two, something that's going to be equally important to Tennessee success this year, uh, as far as, as much as Hendon Hooker and protecting him, will be picking up those short yardage uh, plays. Oh yeah, those cool. uh, third and two when Tennessee wasn't able to convert there. They that's the one place where Tennessee really has to evolve under Josh Heupel. They've got to figure out how to line up under center and just bulldoze their way forward for two or three yards and to be able to to do that consistently. And that that really starts with your offensive line, of course. I mean, you're running back nowhere to go and, and, and to do in those situations, and you gotta be able to fall forward and pick up those extra yards. But it's really on the offensive line to create the running space for them. So that that's something else there that Mincy and the rest of that offensive line will have to get better at this year for Tennessee to win 10 games if that's their goal. Yeah, who, who's going to be the earth mover and who's going to be the running back that, that hits the hole in that that scenario? Because is it is it Jalen Wright? I mean, I think Jabari uh, Small is just – he's just that speed back. He's this, what, scat back, you know? Uh, he's yeah, not it might be Justin Williams, uh, Justin Williams Thomas, the, yeah. the pitch up there. He's kind of a big on the bigger foot, two hundred pounds. Uh, he might be that guy. Yeah, maybe he steps up as a true freshman. I do wonder. I mean, when they when they recruited him, I was kind of wondering if that might be the move as far as he goes. Where at least you you could get him involved as a freshman and and say you are this guy, be this guy for us, and kind of put that in his hands, and hopefully. I, yeah, you, you can't understate the the difference that that would make, uh, especially when you look at the situations that Tennessee ended up facing last year, like uh, Purdue, um, right at the end there. You know, if you just had a guy who could have walked in to the end zone instead of having to stretch out and, you know, do all that, you would have just won. <laughs> and then it would have been that simple. So, uh, 